Okay, incredible, you guys. We are on. So where were we? Ah, we were playing a song for my great, great, great grandfather, King David. Here we go. Let's give it another try. So I want to begin, I want to begin with a story that relates to the song that we're playing right now, David Melech Yisrael Chai Kayam, which means that King David of Israel lives forever. What does that mean that he lives forever? What, did he never die? What is this teaching? And so the best way to tell the story is in first person. So there I was on the subway in New York City and I could swear she was my soulmate. I saw her and I got that knot in my stomach. And I had the audacity to walk over to her and say hi. And I said, I don't want to scare you anything, but I could really feel something here. I got the knot in my stomach and I just want, you know, wanted to introduce myself. She said, it's not a problem. We spoke for a little and I, you know, she said, take my number. I took out my pen, I took out my paper. She told me 4350661. I write it down, 4350661. Doors open, she gets out of the train. I call her two hours later. Two days later, we go out. Two weeks later, it's getting serious. Two months later, it's really getting serious. <laughs> and four months later, we're meeting each other's parents. Eight months later, we're engaged. And a year and a half later, we're married. So does the story blow your mind? Not so much. So back up. There she is, and I can swear she's my soulmate. I walk over, we have a little conversation. She's, I said, what's your number? She says, 4350661. I'm in my pocket, I don't have a pen, I don't have a paper. The doors open, she says, this is my stop. She backs off the train. She waves and I wave, the doors close, and I say to myself, 4350661, 4350661. And the whole entire train ride, I'm saying to myself, 4350661, but it's a two, it's a two hour walk home, I don't know, by the time I get home, I don't know if it's 4350061, 4356611. Open your hearts. For 2,000 years, I'm dialing different combinations. And after 2,000 years, Jerusalem picks up the phone. And this is what it means that King David lives forever. It's not that he never died, it's that he never gave up. He never gives up. And this story is about us, because we never give up. And this is about getting the love that you want. Getting what you want. So the first step to getting what you want is to never give up. This is the first step. But don't worry, I'm not gonna end it here. We're gonna get a little deeper into what it means to get what you want and how to get what you want in a different form besides for never giving up, which I know you already know so well, but still the teaching never endingly apply, infinitely applies. The light of the infinitely applies. And so King David built Jerusalem and Jerusalem is a city that never gives up, built and destroyed so many times, countless. It's 18, I heard 17, I heard 22, but it's always rebuilt. It falls down and always gets back up and the house of prayer for all nations, the next step of our redemption. Because as you know, we have, we have returned to the land in gathering of the exiles is happening. The building of Jerusalem is happening. And the next step is the rebuilding of the house of prayer for all nations. And the house of prayer for all nations, this holy temple is the house which King David wanted to build. And it's the house that never gives up. And who actually merited to build the first one? It was King Solomon, Solomon's temple. Shlomo HaMelech, King David's son. 
And what did he write about his father in terms of never giving up? He wrote, Sheva Yipol Tzadik Vikam. Seven times a righteous person falls and gets back up. So the simple meaning is that you can always get back up. The deeper meaning is that you're not a righteous person unless you fall seven times, at least seven times. Like we know in business, fail hard, fail fast. So never, ever, ever, ever give up. And I would like to move on to the next point and to the next teaching about getting what you want. Before I do, I want to ask the creator of the world to treat us with graciousness, with mercy. Rachamim v'chein. To bless us, to have the ability, no matter what, to never give up. And here we go. So right now, we just said the words to Birchas Kohanim, to the holy priestly blessing, which by the way, I just heard something so beautiful as that. When does the high priest go into the Holy of Holies in the temple? He goes in, in the holiest moment of the whole year, on Yom Kippur. And when he goes in there, does he, does he ask for forgiveness for us? He doesn't. Because when you're in the highest, holiest place, full of love, there's no sorry, there's no forgiving. It's much deeper and higher than that. It's beyond that. And that's really the, the relationship that we're on with the Creator. And Hanukkah, which is coming up, it happened, it, the miracles happened on the hands of the Kohanim, of the priests. They are the Maccabees, Yehuda Maccabee, his father, his brothers. And they are also the ones who light the menorah in the Beit HaMikdash and the ones who go in to the Beit HaMikdash during this moment and realize the greatest love between us and the Creator. A level of love beyond forgiveness and beyond sorry. And so these priestly blessings that we just mentioned, I'll give a, a terrible English translation purposely because that's really what it is. Thank you so much, Susan. Hatzlach Rabba. Back to work you go. So, wishing you great success. All of your heart's desires to come true for the best. You, everyone who's watching, all of our families, the whole entire nation, the whole entire world. Amen. So, what does it mean? Yivarecha Hashem Yishmarecha. May the Lord bless you and keep you. What does that even mean? Yirei Hashem Panavilecha Vichuneka. May the Creator enlighten your face. Yisa Hashem Panavilacha, lift up your face. Yisim Hashalom, give you peace. Come on, this is, this is the greatest we can come up with? What's going on here? What does this mean? Amen. Yes. And this is connected to getting everything you want. And here we go. Yivarechecha. May Hashem bless you. The Hebrew word for blessing, Baruch, is related to the two other Hebrew words. One of them is bricha, which means pool, the great pool, the great reservoir of all blessing. And also berech, which means your knee. So what's going on is that when you humble yourself using your knees, when you're praying the way that we do, you make space, you make a pool, you make a reservoir for all the blessing to flow through you. If 
v'yishmerecha. Keep you, guard you, safeguard you. What does this mean? This means that we need to have the ability to retain because what comes to you, if you can't hold on to it, even for a second, you probably can't even distribute it correctly, which is what you really want to do. And so, Yishmerecha, what is it that you safeguard? Things that are personal to you. When you're a kid and that pencil has your name on it, it means the world. But things that aren't so personal, you don't really safeguard so much. I'm talking about WhatsApp messages, you know, as well as, as, as I know. If it's personal, hold on to it. You might even open it. <laughs> and we're almost up to the part about getting what you want. Ya'er Hashem panav ilecha v'yichuneka. V'yichuneka. Grace. Graciousness. We're asking to be on the level of graciousness. Now what is v'yichuneka? What is chen? What is this grace that we're always asking for and asking about and wanting to be on the level of the Creator with? So everything that I'm sharing with you, by the way, at least this Torah right now, is from the Ishbitzer. Me'ah Shiluach. He explains that chen, chen is being on the level of undeserving. Undeserving love. Unconditional love. So let's get deeper into it. Let me explain about chen. If your child does something cleans his room, does his homework, takes out the garbage, does the dishes, is nice to his younger sister, whatever it is, and you give your child a present as a result of what they did, that wasn't a present. That was his salary. That was his reward. But that wasn't a present. A present is when you give a, a present to your child, even though he or she is undeserving, completely undeserving. This is chen, being on the level of Hashem, infinite one, who there's no end to your blessing, to your ability to bless, to your ability to give, for you have everything. Please, can I have this as a gift? Not because I deserve. And so, let's get back into deserve for a second. Why not because I deserve? Well, here it goes. Everything that you deserve, you already have. That's right. The Creator, Hashem, does not withhold back anything from you. Not even for a millisecond. Everything is instant. Above time and space, you did something, you deserve something, boom, you have it. In this world, it may seem like there's some lag of some sort. And that's our impatience sometimes kicking in. But really, everything you deserve, you have. And so therefore, if there's something you don't have, it's because you don't deserve it. And therefore, if you want it, you need to be on the level of unconditional love, of receiving it, just because I'm asking, please, can I have this? But not because you deserve it. And to say, oh, look what I did, can I please not going to work. If there's something that you want that you don't have, you need to be on the level of chen, on the level of, please, can I have this even though I don't deserve it? You know, sometimes you meet someone and it's just, you can't say no to this person. Why is it? Is it, is it because they're so beautiful? Is it because they're so charismatic? Sometimes you can't say no to this, that person even just for a moment. And the reason you can't say no to them because they have chen. And this is being on the highest level. On the highest level of unconditional love. And so we're asking Hashem, please, please let me be on the level of chen with you, on the level of undeserving love and undeserving kindness. Because everything that I deserve, I already have. And clearly, this thing that I want that I don't have, I'm asking you, Hashem, please give it to me just as a gift because you love me. Please. And this is the level of chen, of getting what you want. So let's move forward. Yisa Hashem Panov Elecha 
lift up my face. What does it mean to lift up your face? So you know, when you give someone a gift, you could be on the level of looking at the gift. That's nice. Someone gives you a gift and you look at the gift while they're giving it to you. That's beautiful. You're clearly a little more interested in the gift. If you got your eyes on the gift, but there's Yisa Hashem Panov, which means I want to be on the level of face with you. Lift up my face to your face. I don't want to be looking at the gift. I want the thing that's so much higher than gift. I want to be looking at your face when you give me the gift. I want her to be looking at my face when I give her the gift. And this is the, high, the highest level of gift giving. It's to be on the level of face. This is the level of, I know what you know. I know what you mean. I know what you feel. I feel it too. Let me ask you, are you, would you be more inclined to give someone a, a gift again if when you gave them the gift, they were looking at the gift? Or would you be more inclined to give someone a gift again if when you gave them the gift, they were looking right into your eyes? V'yaseim l'cha shalom and put peace upon you. Shalom, peace, is the vessel for all blessing. It is the biggest vessel for all blessing. What is shalom exactly? Tosos Galar Beza explains, why is Shabbat called shalom? Because on Shabbat, on Shabbos, we receive something called Neshama Yisera, Neshama Yitera, which means extra soul. And this extra soul makes peace between our body and our soul. And therefore, Shabbat is called Shalom. This is what Tosav Marbar Gemara Beitza explains. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't really explain why, exactly why or what Shalom is. So let's look a little deeper into this. Because body and soul are opposites, and the coming together of opposites is shalom, therefore Shabbat is called shalom, because Shabbat is the coming together of opposites. Body and soul, man and woman, physical and spiritual, light and dark, one and zero, and this is the secret to creation. And sometimes getting what you want has a lot to do with creation, creating something new, whether it be a path, a way, an account, a vessel. And so what is the secret to creation? What were the first two things mentioned in creation? Shemaim va'aretz, heaven and earth, two opposites. And after that, Light and dark, again, two opposites. The list goes on. Interestingly enough, two things not mentioned that were created at any point is fire and water, which are also two opposites. Water always was. Fire we can get into another time. Some say first time was Saturday night. Another one is man and woman, because if you want to create a child, you need man and woman. You need those two opposites. And so those two candles that we light before Shabbat represent the opposites. Man and woman, physical and spiritual, light and dark, body and soul, one and zero, binary code. And then after Shabbat, one of the true fixing of Shalom, which is putting opposites together, Take the Havdalah candle, which needs to have at least two wicks, like the two wicks you lit before Shabbat, and you put those together. And that's why the Havdalah candle has two wicks together, because you've done the true fixing of Shalom, the true fixing of peace. And so Shalom is a very, very, very big part about getting, a very, very big part of getting what you want. Because Shalom 
has everything to do with creation. In order to get what she wants, you might need to create a way for you to get it. Whether it's creating a level of love and relationship to be on the level of chen, of undeserving, unconditional love, or you might need to do something to earn it and create a path that way. You might need to create a vessel to receive what it is that you want, like we mentioned earlier. Racha, bricha, berech. You need to humble yourself, acknowledge the source of your blessing, and create a space, create a pool, create a reservoir for the blessing to come down. You might need to create a personal connection. And so, May Hashem bless us with all of the blessings mentioned in the Kohanic blessing, the priestly blessing. And now, I would like to give you a secret on how to achieve this level how to attain chen, how to at- at- attain this level of being able to receive for free without deserving this unconditional love. Says Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, right in the beginning, one of the first things is that our prayers are answered because of the chen that entails after our prayer. And he says, and we can learn it together another time, but actually want to do what he says we should do. He says, the way to attain chen is through learning Torah. Yes, Torah puts you on the level of chen. And so I brought an incredible safer here, an incredible book, which is a compilation safer, it's a compilation book. It's actually compiled by Gershon Winkler, and it's a compilation of Gemara's, the Talmud, Zohar's, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Baba Cherevi, Shlomo Karlbach, incredible, incredible, incredible sources, Rav Tzadok Cohen, the Maharal, Rabbi Nachman of Breslov, Chovos Halvavos, and the list goes on. It is incredible, incredible. And I would like to share it with you. I'd also like to share with you how I found that. I was in a used bookstore in Jerusalem, going through the used books, and I saw a book that said Kabbalah 365. I'm like, Kabbalah 365? It's a funny combo. What is this, some fake Kabbalah book situation? I pulled it off the shelf, I opened it up. Boom, source after source after source after source. Incredible. Such incredible Torahs. So, before we open it up, what we're gonna add, what, is what we're gonna do in a second, before we do open it up, because that's gonna be the key to getting what we want, is learning Torah, being on the level of chen with Hashem, undeserving, unconditional love. I would like for us to express what it is that we want. The Maori Naim, Chernobyl Rebbe, Menachem Nachem of Chernobyl. It's interesting, I actually know his grandson, his great grandson, his great great grandson, his name's also Menachem Nachem. Rindanel, incredible, love him. So, he mentions, and I think actually his grandson, Menachem Nachem, told me this at the Kotel, at the Western Wall. He mentions, there's a certain place, and this has also a lot to do with getting what you want. There's a certain place in heaven, in Shemaim, where our prayers ascend, and our words go far and deep, but they, they get stopped at a certain wall. They can't go any they can't go any deeper. But what can pass through that wall? What can penetrate that wall? What can penetrate that wall? just our kavanot, just our intentions. 
And sometimes when you're singing, you're using your mouth to say words, but your intentions, oh, they're so much deeper. So we're gonna do a little prayer right now. And we're not gonna use words for this. We're gonna use, you know, the stereotypical Jewish nai nais and lalas. Why is that? Because they're wordless and they can penetrate much deeper and they leave room for your deepest intentions and prayers to come through intentionally so that they can penetrate the deepest places in the realm of prayer. So I invite you to sing with me. And while you're using your mouth to sing, I want you to use your heart to pray. When one person sings, they open up one gate. When two people sing, they open up two gates. When we all sing together, all the gates are open. For those who are watching, uh, please comment a number between 100 and, th and th 365. Between, I'm sorry, comment the number between 1 and 365. Here we go. Shia Rothberg, 218. By the way, this is the book. And this is what the insides look like. Okay, here we go. 
Here we go. 218. Can someone comment, by the way, what time it is? Oh, nice. I have a small glass, 325. Um, if someone could please comment what time it is, that would be incredible. So I know, uh, I know what we're dealing with over here. Okay. Day 218. The shaman in the Judaic tradition does not rush into a spiritual experience like a famished desert traveler arriving at an oasis. Moses is not desperate for a vision because he knows that looking for one often gets in the way of seeing one. When we put all our energy, all our energies into seeking, we risk not finding. We risk rushing right past it. If you grab for a lot, you've come away with nothing. That is Babylonian Talmud, Erchin, 4b. Chazak. Okay, here we go. Avram Shlomo Glass, 325, coming your way. By the way, in numerology, I happen to be a 325. Also, Shlomo Kabach did 32.5. Um, if someone could please comment the time, I would love to see what time it is so I know if I'm supposed to be ending right now or not. Thank you. Okay. Day 325. The first century, Rabbi Hillel, the elder, taught, If I am not for myself, then who is? And if I am only for myself, then what am I? And if I don't do what needs to get done now, then when will I get to do it? Babylonian Talmud, Avos, 1, 14. Perke Avos. Okay, cool, Eres. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Still, I would love to know what time it is. <laughs> Hi, Malka. How you doing? Welcome. Um, yeah, someone please come at the time. All right, Erez, uh, or Malka, please comment a number between 1 and 365. Here we go. And until the next number is coming, I'm going to do a random flip. Okay, this is what I open up to. 196. When two lovers kiss one another on the mouth... They exchange four breaths. Each takes in the breath of the other and gives the other their own breath. The four breaths then join to become a single breath. That is the breath of the child born unto them, as is written, and a single breath shall appear from out of the four winds. Ezekiel 37, 9. This is from the Zohar Chadash, Arishim Bayochai, the Holy Zohar, 63. Okay, cool. Um, Erez, pick a number between 1 and 365. In the meantime, I'll read 197. Why is woman called Isha? From the word Esh, fire. The he, the H, at the end of Isha, is one of the sacred letters of the ineffable God name yud K vav K Y H W H. For woman is divine fire. Fire can consume, fire can create. Thus, when woman dances the two into balance, harmonizing the divine force of judgment with the divine force of compassion. Sefer HaZohar, Volume 4, Folio, 259b. Okay, cool. So if no one comments any more pages, I'm going to end here. And we've learned some beautiful Torahs. It was a pleasure to be with you guys. Maybe I'll end with an instrumental song. I 
just to dance us out a little bit. Um, thank you so much. This is incredible. Thank you to to uh, Erez Diwan Safar and to the Light of the Infinite Festival. Incredible. Incredible name for a festival, by the way. And what an incredible idea. What an incredible conglomeration of holy souls who I cannot wait cannot wait to do this with in person let it be soon right corona's over let's get together huh <laughs> all right here's here's an instrumental for the road may the creator bless us with all of our hearts desires to come true for the best i mean pleasure shia thank you brother <laughs> 